Christian Craftaholic group. I am super excited that you're joining us. I can't wait to see the projects and the things that you're working on. And I'm excited that you're joining me today to craft the uh, Grateful for Amazing Grace kit. So this was one of my favorite um, kits to put together because I absolutely love the song um, Amazing Grace. And so when I was designing this, I loved the layered look of the words. And so I chose grateful so that I could remind myself to be grateful for the amazing grace. So that's kind of the backstory on this kit. But what you'll get in your kit is lovely decoupage tissue. You could use this for another project. We're just gonna put it aside, aside there. Um, you'll always get in any of our kits that you order, you'll always get a different Bible verse. And these are craftable too, so you can use these for another project. Always get a treat. Here we have our Amazing Grace decoupage napkin. And this is the luncheon size, size napkin, so it is five by five, but the inner, um, sorry, six and a half by six and a half. But the inner image is just a little bit um, smaller because we do get these, we do design and custom print these here in the US ourselves. So we have to make the design a little smaller to fit on there per the printing specs that we have to stick with it. And then you have your sign here. So we're gonna be using this five by five tile, which works perfectly with the, um, any of the hymn napkins and a lot of our napkins that we carry. Then you'll also have your grateful um, wooden cutout. And then you're gonna have two little pots here. So this one is just um, black acrylic paint and this one this looks like paint but it's not this is actually the mod podge we'll be using with the napkin and then you also have your jute to hang your sign so some things that you're going to want that aren't in the kit um, we're going to need a glue gun for this project so that we can attach the grateful to the actual tile once we're done decoupaging um, some water to rinse your brush between the mod podge and the paint uh, I like to finish my edges with a sanding block. I'll show you another technique as well. If you don't have a sanding block, you can also use a nail file if you have one of those laying around. And also, um, I like to have, this is a Ziploc bag. You could also use saran wrap or any type of plastic. You could use a grocery bag, any type of plastic that we can put over. We're gonna use this to get the bubbles out of the napkin when we put it on there. So I'll show you how to do that. And then also I like to have some scissors, which I forgot to get out. So those are the things you're wanna, going to want to gather along with your kit so that you can follow along. And then if at any point I'm going too fast, feel free to pause, um, catch up with me. Uh, I tend to talk quickly, so I'll try and be mindful. But the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna paint the grateful first so that this can dry. And so we'll just start with that. So I'm just gonna use, just open my little um, pot here of acrylic black paint. And if you wanted it a different color and you have a different color um, on hand, feel free to use a different color. I just like the black. Um, I also, also, my favorite color is teal. So I like to do a lot of things teal. Um, but I know not everybody likes teal. So I try to make it, you know, one that most people will like. So I'm just going with a light coat and we're just gonna cover this so that it pops. Like you could leave it natural and just do it that way. But there's another one I did. This is a different, a different version, but kind of a similar process to what we're doing today. But I just really like how the black popped, so I'm going with the black. And I'm sure you will have leftover paint to use on something else as well. But we're just gonna go through and just do a light coat. What I love about these wooden cutouts is they take the paint so nicely and they dry really quickly. Now I do have two other words available on the site. You can only get the grateful in this kit, but I also have um, thankful and blessed on the site until I run out. 
My supplier isn't carrying these anymore, so I've got to find a different supplier, and I'm kind of sad about that, but I will, I'll keep looking. I thought about getting a laser myself, but I have so much going on, and if you can see the background here, like I've taken up this whole office with napkin storage and papers and our tissue and our packing supplies and I have stuff in my husband's garage for um, other products and if I got a laser, it might cause a divorce, y'all. Like, I don't wanna push it. So, uh, and that's just gonna have to be for another time. Plus, it's something else I'd have to learn and I've already had to learn so much to get to this point with Christian craft paper. I don't know if I have it in me. So I'm just going through and just catching any little pieces that I missed. I'm actually just doing the top, but if you wanted to do the whole sides, if you can kind of see on here, the sides are a little bit darker naturally. So I don't mess with them when I do the painted words. I just kind of do the top and leave it leave it be. All right, I'm just checking to see if I missed any. If I have, as it dries, if I'm seeing any places that are, the wood is coming through, I'm just gonna touch up those places. Which this brush works really well because it's small, so you can get in the, the details pretty nice with it. And I do want to make sure that I get all the spots now because I'm going to be switching to Mod Podge with this brush and I'm going to clean it really well and I don't want to have to dip it back in the black paint. Alright, so just turning it on different edges to make sure that I don't have any obvious lighter spots showing. And I think that is good. All right, so I've got that one all painted and I'm going to put that up here out of the way so it can dry and I'm gonna rinse my brush off really well. Usually I have a paper towel here as well. I did not tell you to get that, but that way I can reuse my brush in the Mod Podge and you just wanna make sure you get all that black paint out. So we don't want any of that shining through. Close the black before I spill it, cause you know that's gonna happen if I don't. It's Murphy's Law, right? Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is prep the napkin. <laughs> Excuse me. So our napkins only have the print on the one side. And again, if you haven't seen any of the videos before or done a tutorial with me, it's because we do our own designs and we do print here in the United States and so we have to use custom printing. And so because of that, to get the quality of napkin that we want with our own design, uh, we only have the ability, and keep the pricing that we have, we only have the ability to do the front. If I wanted to go overseas and do the whole napkin and do a lesser quality napkin, I could get prints on all four sides. It would still cost more, um, so I'd have to charge more. Um, and then the quality goes down. So I'm just not okay with that. So we just keep the, the prints here and try and keep them affordable and keep the quality. So I usually cut away the excess so that I'm only working with the part of the design. And we only need the top ply of the napkin. So our napkins are three ply. And so typically I always say this is the hardest part of the craft sometimes is getting the top ply. And you'll know you have the top ply because it will be practically see-through. Um, it'll look really thin. That's how you know you've got the top ply. If it still looks kind of white, then there's probably one more ply you need to get off of that. But we just need the top one, so you can see, super thin. And then I have the other two here, we're just gonna put aside. So, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to tack our napkin on here. So a little trick that I have learned when doing signs is not to cover the whole thing with Mod Podge because 
what tends to happen when you do that is you get a lot of wrinkles. So what I like to do is do a thin coat down the middle and then I'm gonna line up my napkin where I want it and then work the rest. So I'll show you how to do that. So we're just gonna do a thin coat with our Mod Podge right down the middle. We don't need a big old blob or anything, but just a nice like one inch type, maybe one inch wide. And I am gonna put a little on there because with this fan I have going on right now, um, it seems to be drying super quick. We can't have that. Okay. So then I'm gonna lay my napkin down and I'm gonna actually do this reverse. So I'm going to figure out where I want it centered and I'm going to just push it down on that and then flip it over. And this allows it, light feather strokes, we're not pushing out wrinkles yet, but this allows it so that my design is centered um, without having to hover the design and catch it on it and then rip it back off and maybe rip my napkin. This seems to be the easiest way that I have found to get it centered with the least amount of hassle. So from there, I'm just gonna gently tug back to where it is attached and I'm gonna work out with more Mod Podge. So go right up to that seam and just pull it out. And again, we're only working like an inch at a time. And try to do it in as straight as a, a line as you can. Again, light feathers as I work it out. And I'm just gonna keep working and go right over your hole. I'll show you how we're gonna punch that through here in just a second. And you don't wanna overthink any of this. Um, that's one of the things I love about decoupage is for the most part, it's pretty forgiving. And again, you don't have to overthink anything. You can just kind of get your feel for it, work slowly in sections and just work out all the way over the edge. Again, light feathers. And then I'm gonna flip it around and I'm going to do the other side. Now you wanna do light feathers because we don't want to um, tear the words. And we don't wanna use a blob of Mod Podge, again, because we are working with prints with words. So we're not pressing down, it's literally just light feathers because we're going to push the bubbles out with our plastic here in just a moment. So again, you can use saran wrap, you can use a Ziploc bag, you can use a grocery bag. I have even used um, laminate paper because that's all I had in my drawer here when I was doing a tutorial until I grabbed it. It actually worked really well because it was thicker. Who knew? Um, but I've used that piece all up. And I don't know where my laminate is, so that must have just been a leftover piece I had sitting in here. All right, still just working from the center, from the middle out. And I'm doing my last little section. Again, we're going right over the holes. So I'll show you how we're gonna punch those through here in just a moment. Okay, if it's not catching on your edge, if you have some lifting, we do need to make sure that that's tacked down all the way. So I'm just coming back with more because I need it sticking all the way to the edge, especially since I'm gonna be using the um, sandy block. I don't want my design to lift while I'm sanding it. Okay, dokey. I'm gonna leave that out because my water is black. <coughs> Excuse me. 
So the next thing we're gonna do is, this is still kind of wet, we're gonna take this over and lay it over there, and then we're going to work from the middle in. I just had a spot where I actually tore the letter, so I'm just working it back down. So work from the center out, and we're just pressing out all of the bubbles in it all the way to the corner and when I use these I like to slide it off if I pull it up sometimes it sticks whoops and I don't want that because it could stick to the paper and pull my design up so for now basically this is what we have so the next thing I'm going to do is while this is still wet I am going to rinse my brush off a little bit and since I don't have my paper towel, I'm just going to use uh, the napkin that I didn't use. Just want to clean that off. We're going to take the pointy end, and you want to punch this through from the front. If we punch it from the back, then our, our napkin is going to kind of come out at us, and we don't want that. We want a clean hole. So I'm just going to take it, and I'm going to punch through, and just kind of wiggle it, and then gently pull out. And then you can see I get a nice clean circle. And I'm gonna do the same thing. Again, I'm just taking it, punching it through, and these get bigger as you go up. So you can, and then I'm just kind of spinning it and then gently pulling out. And then I've got my nice two holes so that my jute will go through there. And there we go. So we are done um, with the Mod Podge for now. What you can do if you have time for it to dry, which I don't, I don't want you to have to wait for me to let this dry, but um, to seal it, you would let this completely dry and then put another coat of Mod Podge, but it does have to be completely dry or it will pull up. So that's like leaving it maybe for an hour or so. And so I'm not gonna seal this one for the video just cause I don't want you to wait for me to have to dry it. And I don't think I have my, my air dryer in here now. So if you want another coat to make sure that um, you can wipe it down or stuff like that, then you can seal it. But we're just gonna move on. And then I'm taking my sanding block and I'm sanding away from me. You don't wanna go back and forth because again, you could lift the napkin design off. So I'm just going down and away from me. Now, if you don't have the sanding block, there's another way to do it. You can take your brush and you can take just a little bit of water and you can run along the inside of it and you can actually just tear it. And it'll tear, you can tear it right along. Use your finger and see how that's tearing right along. And then if you have any of these little edges, you can just come back through with your Mod Podge and paint them down. So if you don't have a sandy block, don't worry. Um, I just have a sandy block in my craft drawer, so it's a little bit faster. And then again, if you have a nail file, that'll work great. And if you don't, just use the water and um, tear it and then just come back through and use your Mod Podge to clean up that edge. it did pretty good there's only a couple little spots all right so you should have something that looks like this and we're already halfway done like this is such an easy project it's great for starters um, if you're like a beginner if not um, it's just fun to do and if you have other um, embellishments you can put add those as well so if you have other stuff, other craft stuff, you feel free to add that stuff to it. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go ahead. I think we are dry enough, and I'm going to glue down my um, grateful before I add the string. So there's a couple ways that you can do it. You can, um, it's kind of whichever you prefer. You could do it straight across. Um, the middle where the music notes are or near the bottom. I tend to like the I'm doing this and you can't even see it. Sorry about that. <laughs> you can do it 
Um, to cover the music notes, so you have them on the top and bottom, you could do it along the bottom, you could do it at an angle. I'm trying to decide which ones I like, which one I like better. I think this time I'm gonna do it right in the middle over the notes. So that's where I'm gonna put it. So I'm gonna add, um, just get my glue. Make sure, cause the sign is a little bit bigger than the tile. So you don't wanna put glue on the outside where you're not gonna have anything to stick it to. And I'm just gonna kinda center it there. And then push it down. I have a low heat glue gun because I have a tendency to burn myself um, very badly. So I have like the baby low heat glue gun. So I kind of have to work a little bit quicker because it can dry really quickly on you. Then of course we got our little spider strings here. I'll try and pick those off. Alrighty. So you can see I have mine in the center there. Probably should have moved it a little over to the right, but you know how it goes. And then the last thing we're gonna do is just put our jute through here um, so that we can hang the sign. So you can adjust this to however low you want the rope. You are probably gonna have to do two knots, um, do a double knot so that it doesn't pull through the hole. And then again, I'm just gonna do that on the other side. You'll wanna decide how long you want the string before you tie the knot, which is nice is if you need to adjust it later, you can always just untie the knot and readjust it. So I'm gonna go there, I'm gonna tie a double knot so we don't go through the holes. And then you can just, if you're happy with the length, then you can just tidy up your backs here. Clip them off, and there you go. Now you can also do it so that the knots are in the front, if you want the knots in the front and then the sign in the back so that it lays more flat. Um, but yeah, that's it. That's our Grateful for Amazing Grace sign. I would love it if you have completed this project that you would share it in the group. Um, no matter if you just did it plain, if you added your extra stuff, it's always great to see what everyone's making. And it also helps us to get to know you a little bit better and uh, to support and lift you in your crafting. And yeah, that's it. So if you love doing these crafts with me, then you might want to check out either the Napkin Club where you can get uh, two of each of our new designs each month. In, or the Crafting in Christ Club. So the Crafting in Christ Club comes with um, 10 napkins, two of each of the new designs, and then also a project where each month we'll get together and we'll craft a project together, or you can just take the craft and create your own. But that's it for today. Thanks again for joining the community. I can't wait to connect with you in the group. And until next time, happy crafting!